one of the most asked interview question is that are you aware of the new features that are available in salesforce and for this people usually go to the documents but they don't quite understand the real use of these features hence in this video i am going to show you the new features specifically to flows and will also explain you how to use them so that you don't fumble when cross questions are asked on same so let's get started so the first feature is new flow wizard now according to this when we click on the new button of the flow when we are trying to create a new flow right now we get one pop up that is start from scratch or use a template previously we used to see all the flows that are available like record flow screen flow and all this kind of flow we used to be able to see those flow but now we get two options that is start from scratch and use a template even previously we were able to get a user template but the ui was quite different so there is an ui update basically that you get one more pop up to start from scratch or use a template so let's click on start from scratch and here you can see all the flows that are available so now let's click on screen flow and let me change it to free form now next feature is that button inside this flow now previously we if you have used the screen flow we used to only have two buttons that is pause previous and finish except this we were not able to add any button at all and this was a drawback inside the flow and that's the reason why we had to go to lwc but now you can embed a button inside the flow itself so let's say i'm going to create a screen one right and i can add a button inside the flow my button okay so now okay we can add a button but what this button can exactly do so this button is specifically used to call a subflow or call some another flow for an example let's say i want whenever a button is created this button is clicked i want a contact should get created okay so let's say i name it as i'm going to name it as create a contact right so i have this button which is going to create a contact but for this i have to do some kind of action so that action i can do it in some another flow let's call it call it as auto launch flow and let's name it as my sub flow i have created this flow which is an auto launch flow inside this flow all i am trying to do is i am trying to create a contact record over here now this same flow my sub flow i am going to call it from the button let me go to the button my sub flow so as you can see using a button that is a custom button that has been built by flow i can go ahead and call a sub flow or an auto launch flow so basically you can fire another flow using this button so this is a practical use of this button okay so this was all about button let's move on to the next feature that is create record duplicate check now according to this previously what we used to do is let's say i have to create some kind of record right i used to pull some screen okay i used to take all the details like name email and all that stuff and then i used to get the records with cert certain kind of name or certain kind of email address if i found this record then i used to say that that's a duplicate record but nowadays you don't need to do that much amount of work instead you can just go and pull the create records create rec let's say manually contact now as i'm going to create a record you can see at the bottom check for matching records if you enable this what this is going to do is it's going to enable and check for any kind of matching records are available or not if it's available it's not going to go ahead and create a record thus avoiding creation of the duplicate records so this is a new feature that has been added inside the create record duplicate check let's move on to the next feature that is text supports reactivity now to explain this feature let's create a screen flow screen let's name it as screen 1 and let's add it add a text field over here where i'm going to take the name right and whatever name i'm going to take previously what we used to do is okay let's say whatever name i'm going to put inside this screen okay i need to show it on the another screen right so what we used to do is we used to pull another screen and here show details let's name it as show details and here i'm going to call a display text display okay name <clears throat> okay 
Okay, so what we used to do is we used to take the input in one screen and if you wanted to show the same details, we had to use one more screen in order to show the details. So if I click on debug, let's put A or something like that and let's click, on, okay, I think so it's done. Let's save it. Okay, let me debug it again. Run and let's type test over here. If I click on next, you can see I am seeing to test details, whatever details in the next screen. But now as per as the new update, you don't need to add one more screen. You can show the details in the same screen itself and which is a very big update. I think so, because I used to go for LWC for the same reason only. So now if I want to show the details display name, right? Whatever, wherever I'm taking the name, I can show the name in the same screen itself, right? So if I'm going to write test over here, immediately I'm able to see test, whatever I'm writing at the top, I can see the same thing at the bottom. That's what the text supports reactivity means. Now, before moving to the next feature, if you are a Salesforce admin, he wants to do an hands-on practice on Salesforce project, I have created a comprehensive Salesforce admin project that can really force you to learn things like omnichannel, a record trigger flow, web to lead, email to lead, approval process, and other complex topics related to admin. To get this project, click on the top mid link below. Let's move on to the next feature that is address field update. Now inside screen, Salesforce has added one more feature that is address field. Now this address field, let's say name it as address. Previously, what used to do is whatever address I'm going to put over here. Okay. It used to directly take that address. Let's say I put some random address and it used to take the same address and it used to populate it within some kind of object. But now it's been integrated with the Google maps. So if I'm going to put some kind of address or let's say Arizona. Okay. It's, it's not giving a pop-up. I think so it will be on record ID, but according to this new update, what it's going to do is this, whatever address field that I'm going to use, it's going to pick the values and check whether it is available inside the Google maps. And then it's going to show us the suggestion based on that. Okay. So basically let's say I'm going to put some text X, Y, Z address. It's automatically going to go ahead and show us the pop-ups so that we will put the correct address. So it's basically integrated with the Google maps. So this is the next feature. Let's move on to the next feature that is transform. Now, if you can see at the left side, we have screen action, subflow and all other things, right? But along with that, we have one more thing named as transform. Now, this is one of the coolest features that I think that let's say you have a contact object. Okay. And you have a case object and you want to map the details of the contact to the case in such cases, transforms comes handy. So if you want to do the mapping of one object to another object, that's where the transform is used. I will create a detailed video on how to use transform and in what conditions do we need to use the transform. Let's move to the next feature that is unlimited post flows. So previously the limit of the flows that you can pause within a single transaction was 50,000. But now you can go ahead and pause as many as flow that you want to. There is no limit at all. So this is the last feature that I had to describe in this video. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.